In today's lesson, then, we will be looking at the development of magic bullets, or as you know them better, antibiotics. This will be the next step, the next stage in our understanding about how infectious disease was conquered. You will be aware so far that at each stage of our journey, um, the cause of infection and illness has changed. We've gone from superstition through to science. But even with the work of Jenna, and then Pasteur, and then Robert Koch, for all of their major breakthroughs, each of their discoveries have limitations. Jenna can prevent smallpox with cowpox, but doesn't know how it works. Pasteur says there are germs in the air causing infection, but can't do anything about it. Robert Koch develops uh, the ability to identify which germs are causing which disease, but can't do anything about it. Louis Pasteur develops vaccinations. He can prevent people catching illness in the first place, but there are still limitations. What do you do with patients who already have the disease? A vaccine is no good then, and that is where magic bullets or antibiotics come in. So as we progress through the course, our studies today transition between the end of the 19th century and the start of the 20th century. The work to do with antibiotics is going to be a legacy of the work of Robert Koch, the German bacteriologist, who was in competition with Louis Pasteur. One of his students will take over where he leaves off, and he will make that work and those pioneering um, steps in the field of antibiotics, which will then subsequently uh, be taken up through the work of Alexander Fleming and the development of the most famous antibiotic, which is penicillin. So as per our normal starter, you're going to unscramble the following words. I'll play through. You need to pause, unscramble the word. Remember, that in itself is not enough. You need to understand which period it comes from. You need to understand why the word is significant. It is important because. And then consequently, you will need to make amendments to your notes. So you can pause the video now and make sure that you can unscramble all of those words and then you can add or amend the notes that you've made. So number one is the black period. That is the period in surgery between the conquest of pain, the work of Lister with chloroform and other anti um, anesthetics like ether, which allowed surgeons to have time without a patient fighting against the pain that they would have otherwise experienced, but the conquest also of infection, and that's the work of Lister. So between the 1830s and 1870s, this is the black period of surgery, where people may have uh, survived the initial surgery that was carried out because of anaesthetics, but then died of horrific infections because the surgeons unbeknowingly took infection deeper into the body. Joseph Lister is the Scottish... Um, surgeon who discovered the properties of carbolic acid that would act as an antiseptic. And James Simpson is the chemist who discovers and uses chloroform to sedate his patients. So between Simpson and Lister we overcome two of the main barriers to effective surgery, pain and infection. Carbolic is the acid that uh, Lister was told got rid of the smell of the sewers in Carlisle and a friend who worked in those sewers who also experienced Lister's surgery said that the smells of both were very similar. Why don't you try carbolic acid in a surgery? And lo and behold Lister found out that it worked. It reduced infection. Germ theory, 1861, Louis Pasteur's discovery of germs in the air. A massive breakthrough defeated miasma theory, but in itself had no practical application. Robert Koch, the German bacteriologist who built upon and was a rival of Louis Pasteur, with Pasteur being French, Robert Koch being German, both were funded by their governments and Robert Koch identified which germs cause which diseases. Miasma, the belief that disease was spread through bad air, uh, which was rendered obsolete by germ theory in 1861. 
Public health is the role that the government has in looking after the health of its people. And during the 19th century, the government go from a, a stance of laissez-faire, hands-off approach that it isn't their responsibility, um, to one where they are very much increasingly hands-on. And one of the reasons why they become more hands-on is because science is proving that there are things that can be done fairly cheaply and very effectively to improve the health of the population. Okay, the next one is again recapping on previous learning. Can you guess the individual as you work your way through this? Remember with our individuals it's important that you understand who they are, when they were, what they did that was important and what were the limiting factors. So again, please be aware that I expect you to understand all of those answers for all of these individuals. In this lesson, we will learning about the development of magic bullets, or as they're better known today, antibiotics. That links to a film here. So what I would like you to do is the following. You need to read the information sheet on magic bullets, and then you need to complete the activities attached. As you're going through that, you will be answering the following information. Why was the development of magic bullets so important? What factors were important in the development of magic bullets? And then which of the first two magic bullets, Sarvarisin 606, or Prontazil, the second magic bullet, which was the more important? When that is completed, what I would then like you to do is to review all the key individuals that we have worked forward and worked through on the course so far. For each one of these, what you need to be able to do is once again be able to explain who they were, when they were, what they did, why they were significant, and what are the limiting judgments on what they did. Why was what they achieved not perfect? At this point, you need to review and make sure that you understand each of these individuals as a case study and understand what they did on the medicine course. At this point, the film will end and you can work through the remaining part of the course on the PowerPoint.